Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. And today we have another uh, tech news segment for you guys, and Ryzen 7000 has launched, finally. Today it came out with its motherboards and the Expo RAM, all of that launched today, and we can expect to see more motherboards come out down the line. As the weeks and months go by, we should see more and more motherboards available for sale. And uh, yeah, so why don't we cover it? So as we can see, we have a screenshot from the original showing of the 7000 series chips. And they were supposed to launch at $699 for the 7950X. Uh, 550 for the 7900X, 399 for 7700X, and 299 for the 7600X. And I believe that is what they launched at. So why don't we go over to Newegg and you can see that they do have these on here for sale. And they are all at the advertised price that AMD first showed. So that's good. And we're going to get into some talks about what I think is the good like investments and um which ones you shouldn't get if you're expecting something you may not uh receive so uh from these chips so we're gonna get into this and as you can see uh like i said they're all for the listed price that amd had set forth and we can look here at the 7600x which is their entry level uh, chip it is 299 and as you can see recently launched uh it says estimated arrival september 29th so they're ready to ship they're ready to go and uh yeah so one thing i want to cover with the 7600x now i want to say that for the money that you're paying for this chip sure it's not like super expensive it's 300 dollars uh but if you don't plan on upgrading or you're wondering if you should upgrade but you kind of want to stick with the entry level chips even if you go am5 i would say hold off uh on am5 if you're going to be looking at the 7600x and the reason why i say that is because in terms of raw gaming performance if that's what you're looking for then i would highly recommend the 5800X 3D, that still outperforms both the 7600X and 7700X in terms of just raw gaming power. It does way better than those two chips in most tests. And you can look up videos like Jay's Two Cents or Gamers Nexus, Linus, I mean, whoever you want to watch. Um, they have all the benchmarks that you can look at and everything. I'm just kind of going based on uh, what I've seen from their videos and what I've uh, heard through the grapevine and stuff. And uh, yeah, and from the charts that I've seen, it's just the 5800X 3D far outperforms the 7600X and 7700X in gaming alone. And if you're looking at real world performance and what to expect and you want, just a good bang for the buck chip and something that's not going to break the bank, but is going to give you a lot of like performance towards gaming itself. Then that's where you want to look. I wouldn't even bother with these two entry level chips from AMD. I mean, the 7600X is $300. $400 for the 7700X, which is, you know, that's around the same price as the 5800X 3D, and you're getting more bang for your buck. So I, I wouldn't even look at these. Um, in my opinion, those two are not very good buys. Uh, they're just, I mean, yeah, you get the newer architect architecture and stuff like that, but I mean, if you're just looking for raw performance, don't bother. Uh, so in terms of so the 7950X is kind of, it's a double-edged sword, right? So this is their flagship chip, and this is the one that is meant for creation. It's meant for 
uh, production loads and stuff like that, workloads. Uh, we're talking about editing. We're talking about rendering. We're talking about anything having to do with like production of a video or anything like that, coding. Um, if, you, if you're looking for something for workloads, the CPU is perfect for that. It's actually probably a bit overkill. And if you're looking at getting a good chip for just gaming, do not get this one. We're going we're gonna to say why here in a second, but this chip, it's a flagship chip. Yes, it's the best one on the list but it's not necessarily the best one for gaming. This one is more catered to the production workloads and things like that. So if you're in the market for something that's just gonna blow your rendering and stuff out of the water and you want something that's uh, really good but not gonna break the bank at two or $3,000 like the uh, Threadripper chips, the 7950X is your next best bet. This thing stomps even the thread rubber chips that are out right now. So this is one I would definitely look at for that. Um, for gaming, uh, I would highly suggest save your money, save the extra 150 bucks, and go with the 7900X. And that's where we're getting into the massive amounts of gaming performance. Um, this is a sweet spot for gaming, in my opinion. Plus, if you if you do a little bit of rendering and you know, video editing, stuff like that, uh, content creation and such on the side, then the 7900X will fit you perfectly. This is probably the one I will be getting. It is uh, 12 cores, 24 threads, and it can boost up to 5.6. I've even seen it boost over 5.7 gigahertz. And it's a super solid chip and gaming performance. It nearly matches the 7950X, uh, even outperforms it in gaming and some titles. So that's why I say if you're going to get a gaming chip that's high end and uh, you just want the best gaming performance you can get out of a CPU, then you want to go with the 7900X. You're saving 150 bucks and... If you ever decide to do YouTube or Twitch or anything, the CPU will be more than enough to handle anything you throw at it. Um, but this is the best gaming CPU that you can get right now. Uh, it's very comparable to the 12900K. Uh, far less power consumption, though, as a 12900K um, can hit you know up to three, 400 watts, depending on the load and depending on if you overclock it or not. Uh, in terms of power draw on the 7900X, we're looking at roughly about 180 to 200 watts at the high end, uh, with about 150 watts being about the average. And uh, in terms of the 7950X, we're looking at about anywhere from 200 to 250 watts. And now one thing you're going to see in reviews on these chips, these chips, all of them get very, very hot. I mean, we're talking between 90 and 95C. Now, don't let that scare you away. Now, AMD has said that that is entirely by design. That is how they are designed to work. They hit a higher frequency at a higher temp. And they don't throttle like normal uh, you know, chips in the past have. They will stay at 90 or 95C while maintaining that boost frequency and that's the thing about these chips they're designed to handle those temperatures while still boosting for long periods of time so if you buy these chips or you look at review videos on youtube or something and you see wow okay that chip's getting very hot that's not necessarily something to, to worry about with this line of cpus amd designed it that way that's how they're meant to be now your temps and uh, your frequencies will obviously, you know, your performance will definitely depend on what kind of cooler you use for these chips. I highly recommend that if you're going to be using a 7900X or a 7950X, definitely, if you haven't got one already, invest in an AIO. Uh, I recommend a 360 at least to, you know, help maintain the performance. Keep your chips as cool as possible, but they will still, even with 
and AIO get very hot. But like I said, don't worry too much. That's how they're designed to work. And um, nothing I've seen so far has caused any problems. And uh, they just they don't thermal throttle under that high of temperatures like most other chips do. So uh, I think that covers those. Now, why don't we move on to motherboards? So the motherboards launched, of course, as well. They are pretty pricey. At the low end, you're looking at about 250, 260 bucks, uh, 245 with a rebate. Uh, this is an X670 board, as are most of these other ones we're going to look at. And I mean, they go anywhere from 250 on up to like $1,200. They are not cheap, even at the low end. Now, we don't have any B670 boards out yet. Uh, those are supposed to be coming in the future, so you can look forward to those. Those should be a little bit cheaper since they are uh, the lower end version of these boards. Uh, they're pretty much the same. They'll just be missing some of the features that you get with some of these X670E boards. But um, regardless, let's look at it around uh, some of these. So they have ASRock Pro RS, ASRock PG Lightning. Um, uh, this one's 500 bucks for the ASRock X670 Tai Chi. This is the one I've seen a lot of people... Uh, a lot of reviewers are using this board to test out the AM5 platform on, and uh, they haven't had any issues with it yet, So, but it is very pricey. As you can see, there is a premium price tag on this motherboard, uh, which, which is unfortunate. $500 is a lot of money for a motherboard. Uh, and then we have the Steel Legend from ASRock also, and that one comes in. That's one of their, like, flagship boards that's one of their higher end ones and uh so this is three hundred dollars so if you didn't want to waste some money on the tai chi you could always spend a couple hundred dollars less and get the steel legend steel legend looks better in my opinion anyway um and we could scroll down here see we have one here it's asus rog crosshair xx x670 e with wi-fi for a thousand dollars which is a, that's a very large amount of money for a motherboard um this is more for the enthusiasts out there that just want the best of the best and will not settle for anything less than that uh so if you're one of those go for it um we got a gigabyte aorus elite here for 289 and uh this one is just an x670 it's not an e version e just stands for extreme and uh yeah so this one's a little bit cheaper but still more expensive than a couple of the other e version boards up here um now we have another asus rog board here 500 dollars. this one has not come out yet this one comes out the 30th of september so keep that in mind. And the same thing with the Strix uh, EF version. This one's an EE. I don't know really what the difference is. They both look the same. Um, but they're similar in price. Those ones don't come out for a few days yet. And uh, let's see. We got the ROG Crosshair Hero. This one's $700. Uh, $600 for the Jean. Um, as you can see, these prices, they're not cheap. They are pretty pricey at the current moment in time. So it's unfortunate. And you can see right here, the MSI board's already sold out. Uh, the Tai Chi Carrera already sold out. Gigabyte Aorus Master already sold out. This is a really cool looking board too. The Aorus Master stuff always looks good. Um, but yeah, as you can see, uh, this is one I was looking at earlier because this was one I was interested in getting, but that one's sold out already. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, and this one here, uh, MSI's top of the line board, the Godlike, is $1,300. And I, that's the most expensive one I've found so far. But good Lord. Uh, yeah, a lot of money. That's like a whole computer. And it's just, you're paying that just for a motherboard. Uh, not my cup of tea. I like the higher end stuff, but I'm not willing to invest that kind of money. I think 
in terms of when it comes to me buying my motherboard, I think $300 is probably going to be my absolute limit, uh, minus taxes and shipping, of course. But uh, yeah, so if you're looking at upgrading to AM5, don't expect to spend just a tiny bit of money. Uh, this is an investment, and you have to be okay with spending a good large chunk of money or uh, plain and simple, don't upgrade to it. Find a different chip that you like on AM4, or if you want to switch over to 12th Gen Intel instead of AM5, that's an option. Some of that stuff's a lot cheaper um, for similar performance on the low end. And for the high end, it, it can be, you know, kind of a give or take depending on the game. But um, so far, the uh, high end AM5 chips have been excelling quite well, especially in the production workloads. But um, yeah, so I mean, that's it for the motherboards, pretty much pretty pricey there. And I mean, DDR5 isn't cheap in general. So uh, what we're looking at is the Expo AMD like ready memory. Um, we're not looking at the just standard DDR5. We are looking at specifically the AMD Expo memory. And in terms of pricing, it doesn't look really too much different from pretty much any other RAM prices for DDR5 that I've found. So that's a good thing because then that means you're not spending much more. Uh, but the bad thing is you're not, you're also not spending any less. So that's the downside, but they got a bunch of different options here. I mean, they got tons of expo memory out. I mean, more than what I thought they would have available at launch, to be honest. Um, here's some Corsair vengeance, uh, similar to the kit I was actually going to get, uh, and same price as well. So. There's that, and then you got the Flare X, uh, 6,000 megahertz for 223. That's actually not too bad. So, um, yeah, that's an option I might look into as well when they restock. Uh, let's see what else they got here. They got Dom Platts, of course, but if you're looking at the high end, you know, it's 5,600, 6,000, you're looking at uh, $200, $300. So, you know, be wary of that. But, um, we also have some Vengeance here that doesn't have RGB, and you can get that for 180 bucks, which actually is a pretty solid deal. And the RAM actually doesn't look too bad either, even for being like pretty basic. I mean, I like the little you know design they have on it. You know, it's just it, it it's basic, but it looks nice. So you know, there's that. But um, yeah, so that's an option if you don't want to spend a mint, you just want something basic that's going to get the job done then you could get something like this this one is 5200 megahertz uh you're probably looking at around 200 for something higher than that but that's still not bad if you compare it to like the dom plats and stuff and then we also have another set of uh g skill flare x memory here 32 gigabyte kit for six it's six thousand megahertz for 190 bucks again not a bad deal that's actually pretty good i'm actually curious to see if they have this in white because i am going for an all white themed build and i would like to know if they have that as an option i'm not used to using the browser or yeah my bar browser on my uh computer for new egg i usually look on my uh phone i'm trying to see here um yeah i'm not seeing any options for white but uh if they have white i definitely want to get that in the future but uh so we got one page of memory some of this is already sold out this is absolutely ridiculous 340 dollars for 5200 megahertz it's it's probably got better cast latencies but it's also uh 32 uh times two gigabytes so that is why it's so high, but still way too much money for me. Um, but yeah, as you can see, not very cheap, uh, but there are some cheaper options out there if you don't want to spend a bunch of money and you just want to get what works. Um, here's another good option here. Uh, Trident Z5 Neo, uh, 32 gigabytes, 6,000 megahertz for only 210. That's not bad either. 
but yeah, so I'll probably be doing a build video or a build guide, I should say, um, a parts list video for AM5 at some point in the near future. Um, I want to look around and wait a little bit, see what else comes out, see what other options come out and stuff. I want to make sure that I can make like the best bang for the buck gaming PC out there. And uh, yeah, we'll get around to that at some point. But for now, I just wanted to cover the entirety of the AM5 platform, show you guys some prices, what to expect, and uh, give you guys some coverage. So, I mean, that's probably going to do it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this informative video. And this is Anubis Tech and Games, and I'll catch you on the next one.